Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program! We are currently in orbit around Minmus, and we are getting ready to land. Hopefully you've collected lots of science from a space high above Minmus, space near Minmus, and you can repeat the EVA experiment multiple times as you pass over different biomes of Minmus. I don't know how many you'll encounter, part of it will depend on exactly what kind of orbit you're going, because for example, I think the poles are another biome, but we're not going over those poles right now. As it turns out, we do have a ridiculous amount of overkill on fuel, but hey, better too much fuel than too little. And therefore, we could do a bunch of maneuvers to try to go above different biomes, but I think that I'm going to leave that as an exercise to the viewer over here. We are going to look at landing. So let's talk about what landing means. Now, we've done re-entry, obviously, on Kerbin. Can we see Kerbin right now? No, I think it's on the other side of Minmus, because we should be able to see it. We're not that far away. It won't be very big, but yeah. Um, we've done re-entry on Kerbin, and all we had to do for that is make sure that our periapsis at some point dipped within the atmosphere, and that was going to slow us down. Um, then we'd open up a parachute and, and gently drift to the ground, or sometimes not so gently, as your, your mileage may vary. But in this case, there's no atmosphere around um, Minmus. So how are we going to land? What is it going to mean to land? Well, first of all, we're still going sideways quite quickly. We're going sideways um, at a certain speed. Now, our nav ball here is currently in orbit mode, this is describing our speed as an orbit around, say, just a center point of um, Minmus. But Minmus is rotating, which means that our speed relative to the surface beneath us isn't the same as our orbital speed. If you go and just click on this little panel over here, it'll switch from orbit to surface. You don't have to do this. It'll actually do this automatically as you approach the surface of a planet regardless. But it, it's useful to illustrate what's going on here. Our speed relative to the surface is 131 meters per second, which is less than our speed relative to orbit. And the reason is that Minmus is spinning at basically, let's call it 12 meters per second. So we don't have to slow down as much because we're orbiting in the same direction that Minmus is spinning. If instead of entering a counterclockwise orbit, if we entered a clockwise orbit, then we would actually have to... Um, we'd have to slow down more because our surface speed would actually be higher than our orbital speed. So we'd have to spend more fuel to slow down. In any case, it's not that much. We're not going to have to use that much fuel. We only have to kill. So our horizontal speed effectively with the surface here is about 130 meters per second. One part of landing is going to be to kill all of our horizontal speed. We can't go, if we're going sideways, we're not going to land. We want to land straight up and straight down. We're not like a plane with plane wheels. We just have landing gear. So we have to land straight down, not going sideways. So one part of our landing is going to be to kill all of our horizontal speed. The other part of our landing is going to be the fact that as we drop towards the surface of Minmus, Minmus's gravity is going to be pulling us faster and faster and faster and faster. It's not that Minmus's gravity is accelerating. It's basically going to give us the same acceleration, but we're going to be our velocity is going to be constantly increasing. And there's a good possibility we might hit Minmus way too fast. So step two of landing is using our rocket engines over here to stop our speed from getting too high. Now, this speed here is the speed relative to the surface. It's not just the horizontal component. Right now, all of our speed relative to the surface is basically horizontal. But if we were to kill our horizontal speed and start dropping straight down, then this number would basically be representing our speed as we approach the surface. So um, it doesn't get split into two, but ultimately we want to land with this number as close to zero as possible. We can't actually have it be zero uh, because then we wouldn't no longer be approaching the surface, we'd just be hovering. So this is going to have to be slightly above zero, but not by much. I think our landing gear uh, is rated, I don't know, it's quite, quite a high impact. Uh, that our landing gear is rated for. Ideally, we'd like to touch down at less than 10 meters per second, uh, which A, will guarantee that none of our parts will break, but B, makes it much less likely that we'll just like bounce off the surface in a really awkward way. So our goal will be a landing below 10. Ideally, if you can land below five, then it's gonna be a really nice, beautiful, gentle landing. So the most optimal way to land is actually not to kill all your horizontal velocity first. Uh, the most optimal way to land, because again, remember like our diagonals, right? If we kill all of our horizontal velocity and then we work on killing all of our vertical velocity to end up at the sweet spot, we're sort of going one direction and then the other direction. And we know that diagonals are the best way to save fuel. However, we have like infinite fuel in this setup. And by far the easiest and most foolproof way to land 
is to kill all of your horizontal velocity first and then just work on not crashing. And also we'd like to land on a nice flat spot. So this is a nice flat spot, but what's really flat on Minmus are these frozen oceans, basically. And that's one of the real reasons to come to, to Minmus. These places are 100% perfectly flat. If you land on the slope, your ship might flop over and you know tumble down, and it probably won't kill you, but if your ship's not pointing up when you're on the ground, it makes it a heck of a lot easier, or harder to leave the planet. So I, normally I might actually plan a maneuver here to, to plan our, our, our descent, but that's not going to be the case. So I would like to land somewhere over here. It's going to take a few seconds of burn to kill our horizontal velocity. So I'm going to start, I think, burning off our horizontal velocity somewhere around here. So hopefully by the time we get here, it'll all be killed, and then we'll drop straight down onto that chunk. We might actually wait a little bit longer. Our path is actually taking us over a long flat area, so we've got a big margin forever. So you know what? I'll start burning somewhere around here. So how do we kill our horizontal velocity? Well, we know that burning retrograde is generally how you kill velocities overall. And because we're mostly just going straight sideways, right now all of our velocity is basically horizontal. And you can tell that because this is literally the horizon, right? This brown bit, if we, if we point into the brown, it means we're pointing towards the planet. If we point into the blue, it means we're pointing up towards space. So if we're pointing at the place where blue meets brown, that means we're pointing on the horizon, which means we're pointing horizontally relative to the planet. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to line ourselves up with the retrograde marker, but while still being right on the horizon. So this, I would say, is we're on the horizon, just above the retrograde marker. How does that feel like to you? That's how it feels like to me. So I'm not actually gonna care about pointing retrograde because our retrograde marker will actually change as we start our descent because our retrograde marker will always point in the direction opposite of what we're moving. And as we're moving downwards, then the retrograde marker will start pointing more and more and more behind us, i.e. towards the sky. And we'll know we're going straight down. We're gonna be going straight down when our retrograde marker ends up right on top of our nav ball because that would mean the backwards direction is straight up. And that's exactly what we're hoping to achieve. So I'm gonna burn on the horizon to kill all horizontal speed. As much as possible, there you go, somewhere around there. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna time warp. I'm gonna quick save. In fact, you might wanna do a hard save before you start your landing because it's very easy to crash the first few times. We're gonna time warp until we're just over the start of this flat, that's good. Okay, and of course, uh, everything changed as we moved around the planet. So once again, I'll reset ourselves to be on the horizon, but sort of vertically aligned with the retrograde marker as much as possible, somewhere around there. Okay, I'm gonna start the burn. And what's gonna happen here, very quickly, our surface speed is gonna start dropping, and you can see our retrograde marker is being pushed up. It's exactly what we're looking for. We're pushing the retrograde marker up to the top of the nap ball. Again, I will remind you, this is not the most fuel efficient landing. Killing all your horizontal velocity first is not the most efficient, but it's pretty good. Now, it's going to be difficult slash impossible to completely kill all your horizontal movement. Um, so I'm going to call that pretty good. This, I mean, look, we're here. We're going to be descending here. You could see this ends up going pretty straight, right? We're going we're a little bit more curved now, but as we get to here, we're going mostly just straight down. That's looking okay. Our surface speed is increasing right now. Why is that? It's because gravity is pulling us downwards. This speed is mostly representing vertical movement now, and that's gonna become very true over here. So I think I'm good with that. We're gonna land somewhere in the flats. Looks great. We're done with the map view. We're gonna go back over here. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ditch this. We do not want this fuel tank to be with us as we come in on this landing, because no. So I'm gonna go ahead and stage and get rid of it. Goodbye. I'm also gonna deploy my landing gear. You can do that by right clicking and clicking extend, or you can hit the G key, G for gear. We're gonna pop out our landing. Great stuff. Okay, so now we are slowly drifting downwards towards the planet. We're gonna land somewhere over there. Remember that your, your camera view is not a good sign as to which key you should hit to turn in various directions. It is not helpful for that at all. You wanna look at the nav ball. So that's what we're gonna do. Look at the nav ball. Notice our retrograde marker is basically on top. Well, that's really good. If it wasn't, remember that what we're sort of doing by burning retrograde, think about it as pushing. You're pushing the retrograde marker somewhere else. So if I were to burn now, I'd push the retrograde marker that way. Whereas if I go over here, I'm gonna push it back the other way until I can get it 
basically on top of the nav ball. So I'm going to give it a little shift, a, a tab a shift, you know. There we go. That is pretty darn close to being centered on that cross in the middle of the nav ball. I'm going to say we're probably mostly moving vertically. So our, our speed is increasing as gravity of Minmus, although it's really weak gravity, is pulling us down. Not really a big deal. So now I'm going to go ahead and point upwards. Again, I'm going to assume that we've killed most of our of our horizontal speed. So I'm going to point upwards. I mean, we're sort of pointing retrograde here to slow ourselves down as we descend. Now, if at any point we burn so much, let me show you something. I'm going to burn a bunch. What happened there? I burned so much that we're actually moving upwards now. This is my prograde marker. We're moving up right now, but gravity is pulling us back down. So the prograde marker is going to get sucked down to the bottom of the nav ball. And when we start moving actually downwards, which is now the retrograde marker is going to come back, right? So that that's your hint that you've burned too much. And in fact, our engines are insanely powerful right now. So powerful, in fact, that I'm going to go ahead and derate them. You want both of them to be the same. I'm going to pick just arbitrarily about 25. I wish you could like type a number in here or mouse wheel. Okay, 26 maybe. You want them both to be the same, otherwise you'll get uneven burns. Er, doesn't matter what the number is, as long as it's smaller. Come on. Oh my god. Why is it so hard to get exactly what I want? There it is. Whew. Okay, they're both set to 26. Because these engines are so powerful that if I hit Z for thr throttle, I'm going to go from like Instead of slowing my descent, I'm going to be rocketing straight upwards. So depending on your design and whatever, you may or may not want to do the same thing. But now, let's just as a test, if I hit Z, yeah, it still kills our speed really fast. So I'm going to go ahead and quick save again. And what's our altitude? Our altitude is 19,000 meters above, quote unquote, sea level, right? This is always your sea level altitude. And while there are sort of no seas on Minmus, hey, there's Kerbin, um, there's still the concept of a sea level. Uh, if you're landing on, say, these these highlands over here, you will land and your height will still say something like, I don't know, a thousand meters, you know, some, some amount greater than zero. So this is not your distance above the ground. However, these flats are basically the ocean of Minmus. So when we land, this will be very close to zero. Since it's technically the center of your, um, your ship, uh, it'll probably say something like, I don't know, 20 or something like that, but we've got a while to go. So I'm going to go ahead and time warp. Keep in mind, my surface speed is increasing here, but that's okay. All right, let's slow that down. Um, ideally, the most fuel efficient way to do this is you just drop, 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 and then just at the sweet spot, right before you hit the ground, you would a full throttle in such a way that your vertical speed hits zero just as you touch down. It's called a suicide burn. It's basically impossible to manually do it. So we're instead going to be slightly unoptimal. And as we get closer, we're going to try to just prevent our surface speed from getting too high. It's hitting hundred meters per second right now. And so that means we've got about 50 seconds until we hit the ground, right? So I'm going to start slowing us down. I'm going to try not to go above 100. You can see my, my retrograde markers drift a little bit too. So I'm going to just try to just burn a little bit, mostly retrograde, but slightly to push it back to the center. There we go. That's looking okay. So let me burn a little bit more here just to try to stop the surface speed from growing too quickly. So we're 28,000 or 2,800 meters above the ground, 2,500. I'm going to try to bring my surface speed down to about 50. There we go. So we've got about, what, 40 seconds until landing. Now, the nice thing is you want to land on the sunny side, by the way. I forgot to address this. Let me hit escape to pause for a second. You want to land on the sunny side for two reasons. One, on the sunny side, your uh, solar panels will work, which is great. The other advantage is on the sunny side, you can see your shadow. That's your shadow over here. I mean, it'll be in a different position depending on exactly where you are. The, sh the sun's sort of high noon here on Minmus, which is nice. Okay, we're closing in on 1,000. I'm going to go ahead and slow us down some more. There we go. Closing down. So, I mean, you can always do the math, right? If we're, let's call this 600 meters above the ground, and we're moving at, say, 20 meters per second, then that means we're going to arrive at... Um, I guess this is a fifth of 100, so five times this. So 30 seconds. Currently, we're, we're looking to land in about 30 seconds, given our altitude and our current velocity. All right, we're going to slow us down more. We continue to drop. So 
Just letting that drop, letting that accrue. So we're not going straight up and straight down because our, our, our retrograde isn't straight in the middle here, but it's pretty close. If I want, I could go ahead and maybe just shuffle it a little over a bit, but mostly you wanna make sure that as you get close to the ground, you're pointing straight up and ready to go. So I'm gonna kill some more speed here because if I was going at a speed of 10 meters a second, we're about 20 seconds away from landing. There we go. I would like to land under five meters per second if I can. So I got another bit to go here. I don't know exactly what the altitude will be when I land, so I'm damn close. So I'm just using these little sort of air. And in fact, if you can somehow get your thrust to be at such a point where the surface speed doesn't really change, so it's dropping here. If I go here, it's ooh, pretty steady actually. That's quite nice. And 2.8 meters per second is a great speed. You can tell we're drifting a little sideways. But that's okay. I'm going to be very happy with this landing. Very happy indeed. I could do a little bit more right at the end if I want to land as gently as I can. And kill the engine. Thump. There's a good chance your first landing won't be quite this smooth. If you have much in the way of sideways motion, there's a chance that you'll land and sort of start to tumble. Uh, maybe that'll be okay. Maybe it won't be. That's why we quick save. But just like that, we have landed on a another celestial body. If you were landing on the moon, the moon's gravity is considerably more than Minmus. Still less than Kerbin, but a lot more than Minmus, which means you need a lot more thrust to slow down and counter the moon's gravity, which means you, you use a lot more fuel on your landing. Um, also, things tend to happen a little bit faster. The nice thing about Minmus, let's say, here, check this out. Look, look how slowly we just like, ah, oh, we're just floating. Everything's chill. Nothing to worry about. Oh, it's just like... It's so gentle and gorgeous. A little bit of a bounce there. And then you settle down. It's very easy to land here. Are you ready for some awesome science stuff? I am. Before we exit the capsule, let's run everything from inside. We're going to get a crew report. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh-huh. All right. Good. Good amount of science from this. Let's get a pressure data. Uh-huh. Look at the 60 science from the barometer. That's crazy. We're getting 40 science from our thermometer scan. That's incredible. We're going to get a lot from the goo canister. 50 from that and a lot from the uh, material bay because we know that's worth a lot of science normally 125 science from a single experiment unbelievable we're to keep this experiment as well now when you're on the ground your experiments are always tied to a biome so we can do this experiment here if we have enough fuel and we kind of do and if we want to take the risk we could float over there land on that land and be in a completely different biome and run more experiments we might have to try that. But for now, Bob is going to EVA. He can take an EVA report while he's on this ladder. There we go. This is the Greater Flats over here. Greater Flats are often where you're going to land first as a uh, on your first visit to Minmus because it is the biggest, flattest area, so it's one of the easiest to land on. 40 science from this. This is great. We're going to keep this experiment. Now, definitely do... Ooh, oh, I can't quick save from here. I'm going to tell you what. I'm just going to board. I'm going to do one more quick save here. You want to quick save before you let go of the ship, because your first time, it's going to be quite hard for you to get back on here. And intentionally did not design this with ladders, um, which can make it a lot easier for you to get in and out of your ship. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and just let go. Whee! And, oh, works as a step. That's great. And we're just going to walk off here and get down to the ground. And walking on Minimus is pretty incredible. I mean, it's more slow motion than walking on the moon and all those weird videos. Not only that, I'm gonna hit the space bar to jump. We're actually, our jump is sending us higher than I did on that little, um, that little r uh, rise that I did with the spaceship here. Look how high we get. And don't worry, we're falling so slowly that Bob is not gonna be hurt. It's great. Our jetpack, if we hit R to activate our jetpack here, the RCS, and we hit shift, give us upwards. We can fly around here with great ease. You want to avoid going sideways too fast, because if you come down going sideways too fast, you can tumble a bunch, and sometimes you can even kill your Kerbals. But look at that. Look how much control you've got over things. Just wonderful. So we've got two more things we want to do on the planet surface over here. First thing we want to do is we want to right click and we want to plant a flag because flags are awesome. I think planting a flag also gives you more experience on your person. But when you plant a flag, you can name this thing. Uh, so I'm gonna say, Bob was 
here. Here. Uh, Kerbals aren't known for their spelling. Bob was here. Uh, this uh, plaque commemorates... I don't know if that's spelled right, but it let's pretend it's Kerbal spelling. Uh, the first steps of a Kerbal on a celestial body other than their home world. Like that. Boom! And what's great about this flag is if you hit M to go to the map view, um, oh, it doesn't show us here. Normally it shows us flags. Maybe it's because I'm in the EVA mode, but it will often show you the flags from the map mode, which is great. So I said there were two more things I would like to do. One thing was planting the flag. The other thing I can't do right now. Why is that? Well, let's leave Bob out here for a second. No offense, Bob. You're going to be fine. Don't worry about it. We're going to go to the space center. And hopefully we have enough money for this. I'm not sure if we do. If I right click on the research and development, oh, I don't. I'm just shy. Because if you upgrade R&D, you gain the ability that Kerbals can collect surface samples. I only need an extra 50k. I'm going to go to mission control. I'm going to accept some missions here that have an advance. Oh, we got a mission to plant a flag on Minmus now. Hey, let's take that mission. We'll be able to instantly complete it. Plus, it's a big advance. That's great. Anything else? Plant flag on the moon. Um, transmit or recover scientific data from space around Kerbin. That's an easy contract to complete. We'll say yes to that. Anyway, I've got tons of advance money. I've got tons of cash right now. So I'm going to right click on R&D. I'm going to upgrade this. Boop. Which will now enable me to do surface sample collection. So I'm going to go to tracking station. We have two tracked objects. We have our lander. And we also have Bob all by himself. So I'm going to go ahead and fly, quote unquote, Bob. There we go. So now Bob over here on Minmus. Hello. I can now take a surface sample. Surface sample from Minus of Greater Flats. The surface seems to consist of tiny crystal-like grains. Very pretty, but probably not edible. That's worth 150 science. It's worth noting you can do surface samples on Kerbin as well. It won't be worth near as much. But you can get more science out of this by running around on Kerbal taking um, surface samples. So we're going to keep that experiment. Hooray, Bob! So, doom, 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 doom. we are all done over here. We could just take off and go straight home. We're going to try to do the thing where we land over on these hills to get an extra biome, because we should have plenty of fuel to do that, I hope, I think. So Bob's going to get over here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to get him to collect the data from the Science Junior. We'll get him to restore it as well. Why not? Can we reach the goo canister? No, I cannot. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go and get on the little ladder that's in front of the crew hatch over here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit R to turn on the RCS so I can use jetpacks. I'm going to tap shift. Just tap, tap, tap. Get roughly this, the right height. I'm going to tap W for forward. Tap a little bit more shift. This is a little tricky. A little tricky. And hit F to grab. You will probably screw that up a few times. That's okay. Just make sure to make a, a hard save so that you don't accidentally kill like Bob by slamming your, his face into the spaceship or something like that. But with a combination of just moving a little forward and a little taps of shift to stay level, you can go and attach yourself over here, which is lovely. So now I can reach the goo canister. I'm going to collect the data and then restore it. I'm going to uh, take the data from the barometer. I'm going to take the data from the thermometer. And then I have to take all the data, all 16 experiments out of the command pod just to clear the crew report slot. So we're going to take everything and then we're going to board, which is going to re, uh, restore everything. And there's a little flag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quick save and we're going to see if we can't fly over there. Now, remember that our point of view from our camera and everything like that might be a little tricky. The nav ball is mostly the way we're going to want to go. Although we do sort of know how this you know, is going to fly, right? My W it should pitch us down towards the horizon there. A should um, pitch us left over there, which is true. Basically, we want to fly. We want to fly to the west. And we can actually confirm that on the map. If I go here and I zoom in a whole bunch, right? Here's our ship. I want to fly west or maybe even northwest and then try to land over there. As, as soon as I'm not on the blue stuff over here, I should be in a different biome. So let's see what we can do. We're going to need... I'm going to give us just a little bit of throttle to send us up. Remember, my engines are still at 25% here. All right, that's going to be good enough. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt northwest over here, right? So that's north, that's west. And yeah, it looks like my ship's pointing the right way. So I'm going to give us another... Actually, I'm going to tilt down... No, nah, you know what? This is okay. A little up and a little to the horizon. So we're going to be adding a little bit more height. 
what does this look like on the uh, the map here? Because we can see our apoapsis, or we can see our path. Let's go a little bit more. There we go. You can see the blue line. Okay, we're going to land over there. I'm going to go a little bit further. There we go. So now we're definitely going to hit the ground over there. That seems lovely. Hopefully we're not using too much fuel doing this. <sighs> There's some risk. But hey, that's what space exploration is for. So I'm going to get ready. We're obviously going to have to do, again, where we burn, well, mostly retrograde to stop ourselves from moving. But really, first step we're going to do is we're going to kill our horizontal motion. Quick save. Oh, I can't, yeah, I can't do a regular time warp. I could alt click to do a physics time warp here. If you alt and period, it'll do a physics warp, which is different. Very dangerous. I'm just being impatient for the sake of the videos. You should not be doing any time warping. All right, so anywhere around here, I think I'm going to be very satisfied with a landing. Uh, we could verify the biome that we're over, but by doing a quick little EVA. EVA, right click, EVA report. Uh, we're now over the lowlands. Excellent. We're going to go ahead and board. Oh, we already had a lowlands uh, EVA. That's okay. But it confirms that I'm on a different biome now, which is lovely. So I'm going to go ahead and let me drift a little bit more. There we go. Okay. I'm going to go and kill my horizontal mov movement. Of course, what it's effectively doing is pushing our retrograde marker to the top, which means we're going to be going straight down, which has now started to happen. So yeah, I'm just going to try to push the retrograde marker to the top of the, the nav ball. Excellent. That looks pretty good. So probably we're moving straight down. Again, gravity is going to start pulling us down, 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 down here. So we're going to be landing on a bit of a slope going to be a lot trickier than before. I might want it to land up there, actually, because this is a little flatter. There's definitely going to be some risk here landing on the float on the slope. I think it's going to be okay. Where's my shadow? Where's the sun? Is it straight up? Oh, it is straight up, so our shadow should be just beneath us. Must be one of those dots that I just can't tell yet. Oh, there it is. That's the shadow. That one there. If you're going to land on the darker side of the planet, having some lights that point down is also a good little helper. So, we're not going to be landing at like zero meters like last time. So, I'm just bringing us down to a slower speed. Trying to point straight up and down. And I'm not talking much, I gotta focus. As our speed goes lower, as we kill more of our vertical speed, you'll see the, the retrograde marker move a little bit if we have any horizontal speed whatsoever, which is inevitable. Okay. Now, when landing on a slope, it's that much more important to try to land as softly as possible, because otherwise you'll bounce off at a really awkward angle. So just bleeding off speed slowly, slowly, slowly. And kill the engine. Okay. Whew! Very risky to land at an angle like this, but we seem to have done all right. So, we can now get a crew report from the lowlands as opposed to the greater flats. We're going to run the barometer. We're going to run the thermometer. The goo. And finally, the material bay. And we need to EVA. Uh, we've got our EVA report from the lowlands, but what we can still do is get a surface sample. We could plant another flag, but I think that would be, you know, kind of embarrassing at this point. Now, if we didn't feel like we have enough fuel to get our ship over here, we could have still walked over here with Bob, and he could have at least taken a soil sample report. Um, I guess we can take a, a soil uh, report from the actual lowlands itself, as opposed to above, right? We can take an EVA while flying above the lowlands, but we can take an EVA from the ground itself. Hopefully I did that at the Greater Flats, I don't remember. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit R to activate my RCS. Tap shift a couple of times to get sort of level, move forward, and then hit F to grab. We're going to go ahead and board. There's no reason to reset the experiments at this point uh, because we can't run them again. Well, it's not entirely true. I'm going to go ahead and take these all. You know what? Oh, I'm being an idiot. I do need to take the ones from the bottom because remember, these two bits are not coming home with us. They're below our separator, so it's that much more important that we collect the data. And then I guess we'll go ahead and restore it just in case something comes up. We'll collect the data here and we'll restore that as well. We're gonna take out all the data from the command pod so that it clears the crew report again, and then we'll go ahead and board. All right, it's time for us to leave and go home. 
We're gonna do that in, in this video since uh, it should be perfectly fine for us to do it all at the same time. So we need to get into orbit around Minmus. Now we know at this point, getting to orbit mostly means going sideways. You only have to go up high enough on Kerbin to leave the atmosphere. On Minmus, you only need to go up high enough to not smack into one of the hills. That's it. Any more higher than that, you don't really need it. So we are still gonna try to take off eastwards because that's the direction Minmus is moving. And it is, if we toggle our nav ball here, you can see, we currently have 9.4 meters per second of free speed be, uh, based on our surface orbit. East is over here. You can see the 90 degree marker on the nav ball. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to take off vertically a little bit. I'm going to go and uh, bring my engines up to full here. 100%. I'm going to take off. And then I'm just going to kill the engines a second as I turn east. And mostly horizontal is going to be okay because we're probably going to be high enough to dodge anything. But I'll, I'll go just above the horizon so we get a little bit more height and go. I'm also going to hit the G key to bring in my landing gear. It's not important, but it looks better. So we're going to do that, and if we stop the burn, our apoapsis is already at 35 kilometers. <laughs> we, like, we overkilled our orbit in like two seconds of our engines burning, which, again, just goes to show you how much Minmus is ridiculously low. So I'm going to go ahead and just time warp. Oh, we got to wait until we get above three kilometers before I can actually time warp. Do, 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 uh, you could take this opportunity to do some more EVAs with Bob, because there's no atmosphere here. You're not going to get blown off your ship or anything. Uh, so in case you pass over other biomes, hey, there's our home world. There we go. So now we're over 3,000, so I can time warp. So I'm just going to do that. And all we're going to do at our apoapsis, we're going to circularize so we enter into an orbit. So as we approach here, okay, I'm going to kill the time warp and face ourselves prograde. There we are. Just get a little closer. And again, this is going to be a very short burn. So I'm going to get darn close to the apoapsis. Good enough. Prograde, burn, and all we need to do, there we go, is get our periapsis to be I don't know, above 5k or something like that, so we don't smack into a mountain. And there we are. We are now in orbit around Minmus. We've used barely any fuel to take off. Just lovely. We still have more than half a fuel tank, which is going to be more than enough to get home. So how do we get home? Well, we have to break orbit of Minmus, right? Right now we're in an orbit. We have to go and get an escape velocity of, of, of Minmus, which means we're going to want to burn prograde somewhere to raise our apoapsis to be so high that the apoapsis is outside the sphere of influence, which means we escape Minmus at that point. The ideal place to do that would be to burn at the periapsis so that we raise the point in our orbit that's already the highest to even higher lengths. And yes, that is by far the most fuel efficient way to leave Minmus. However, that's not necessarily the most fuel efficient way to return home to Kerbin. What am I talking about? Well, if we zoom out over here, the thing to remember is that while we're in orbit around Minmus, What's much more significant is the fact that Minmus is an orbit around Kerbin. And if we want to come home, so at some point, if we were to just burn, we would escape Minmus and we'd be, we'd once again be in some sort of orbit around Kerbin. But we know once we're in orbit around Kerbin to return home, we're going to have to burn retrograde to drop our, our periapsis to be within the atmosphere so we can return home. Since we already know we're going to have to burn retrograde relative to Kerbin, can we use that to plan our, our escape from Minmus? The answer is very much yes. Because what we're effectively representing right now, we are really in the same orbit. I think I was looking at the wrong side. Yes, I was. The same orbit around Kerbin here as Minmus is. Which means to return home to Kerbin, what we really want to do is burn retrograde relative to this orbit. Right? And retrograde means opposite our speed. So if we're going counterclockwise, as always, it means from where we are now, we're going to want to burn pointing to the right. We're going to want to point to the right, which is the opposite direction of what we're moving, and we're going to burn that way, and that will drop our periapsis, which is right now the exact same as Minmus. We're going to want to drop this periapsis to be inside of Kerbin. And what that means is it would be the best if we left Minmus, if we leave Minmus going to the left. That's kind of sort of the same thing as burning retrograde relative to, to Kerbin. It, they're for fuzzy things. There, there's actually 
there's a couple of different things with your burn and blah, 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 but that's going to be the, the rule of thumb that's very easy to follow. So if we go and somehow leave Minmus pointing to the left, that means we're leaving Minmus as retrograde as possible relative to Kerbin, is the way I think about it. There may be other things, but it seems to work out okay. Um, if we had the ability to plan maneuver nodes, we'd be able to figure out exactly where to start the burn in such a way that we will escape leaving left. It's normally somewhere around here. So if we burn somewhere around here, what we're effectively doing, right, if we're burning prograde here, we're raising the apoapsis here over this way until it pops and breaks our orbit, which means that the path that our orbit's going to describe is going to be something like this into infinite ap um, apoapsis. So I'm just going to go ahead and time warp to somewhere around here. Do, do, do. Did it slow me down? Oh, yeah, 100 is the fastest we can go because we're a little bit lower. So, yeah, somewhere around here. So, again, uh, currently, I've got us positioned at about 6 o'clock. I'm going to want to leave going leftwards, uh, which I have determined probably is something like this. So, let's just turn... We want to turn prograde because we need to... Relative to minimus, we are burning prograde to raise our apoapsis until it pops. Whoop. Okay. Yeah, I didn't burn it exactly the right place, because again, I would normally like this to be leaving leftwards as opposed to here, but that's going to be okay. So now if I zoom out, I can see what our new orbit around the moon, or around Kerbin is going to be. Point at the wrong thing and say the wrong thing. And you can see, again, our orbit, when we were in orbit around Minmus, what we really were was in the same orbit around Kerbin as Minmus. So we were this purple line. This purple line is Minmus's orbit, but that was us. By leaving the way we did, we did an okay job of dropping our periapsis towards Kerbin. We didn't do a perfect job because we actually ended up in a slightly higher apoapsis than before. If we had been right bang on with our maneuver, our apoapsis would basically be right on the line of Minmus, and our periapsis would be a little lower. But we're pretty darn close. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to fast forward until we leave the sphere of influence of Minmus. Go a little faster. And as it crosses over, it's going to drop to 50 automatically. And then there we go. I'm going to kill our speed completely. We are now in orbit around Kerbin. So we still need to get there, which means the lowest point in orbit has to be within the atmosphere of Kerbin. The atmosphere of Kerbin starts at 70k. Ideally, I tend to go somewhere between 20 and 30k, just because otherwise it gets just a little bit silly and ridiculous. So we would like to lower our, bring our lowest point down to about 25k which means we have to lower our periapsis. Like our, that, will, that will be our lowest point, which will mean it will be our periapsis. The most optimal way to do that is to lower what is already our periapsis and bring it down, because it's already closer to that spot. Which means the sweetest spot to do this burn is at our apoapsis over here. So what I could do is I could just do a big time warp and get over there. And really, there's no reason not to do that because we don't have life support supplies or anything like that. We're not on any timer. Um, Bob could stay in space for like three years and he'd still be 100% fine. If you are, for some reason, somewhat impatient, you could retrograde burn here. We're close enough to the apoapsis and our orbit is circular enough that it's actually not going to be a substantial difference between the two. But if we want to be as optimal as possible, then what we're going to do is we're going to click on the apoapsis marker over here and we're going to say, hey, I'd like to warp to here. So it's 30 days of Kerbal game time. 30 days of Kerbal game time will pass as we wait to join the apoapsis over there. Do, 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 do. I think I can go a little faster here. It's always a little risky. And it does cancel your auto time warp. So I'm going to assume once again, cancel, and then warp to here with the auto time warp. Get as close as possible to the apoapsis. You don't have to be exact at this point. The distances are so huge that it really makes very little difference. So I'm going to right-click on the periapsis so I can see that number. I'm going to find the retrograde marker, which is the yellow circle with the downwards wings. And we're going to burn retrograde to drop the periapsis to within the atmosphere. Now again, it's going to go quite fast at the end. Oh, we actually got a moon encounter there for a second if we wanted. And I'm aiming for about, whoops, 25k. I went too far. Let's go to prograde. And just try to, one trick you can do is you can hold X and tap shift. Oh, apparently holding X doesn't work. Maybe holding control. Hold control, then tap shift. Yeah, there we go. Because as long as you hold control, you're bringing down your throttle. So you tap shift to bring it up for a second. And as soon as you release shift, it brings it right back down. It's 25K. If you can't get it with uh, this level of precision, you can't quite hit it, just go ahead and right click on your engine and just like 
derate them. Oh, not the gimbal limit. Derate them. Again, you want both of them to be the same, which in this case is apparently 12.5. There it is. You want them both to be the same, otherwise you'll burn crooked and that will be really awkward. Um, and then it's going to be a lot easier to get precision. But hey, that's 25k. That's pretty good. I'm going to go with quick save. I'm going to ask for a time warp to here. We know we're not going to intersect the moon because with our patched conics, we get that information. So we know for sure we're not going to intersect the moon. But just in case, I'll keep the uh, the fuel around. Woo! All right. Those time warps can be dangerous until we're there. I'm still satisfied that we're looking at a periapsis of about 25 kilometers. That's great. We have emptied the science from this material bay and the uh, containment unit. We do actually have a mission right now to get science from space. Um above above Kerbin over here. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a crew report. It's going to be worth zero science, but it's still going to satisfy this um, this contract. So when we return with that science, it should complete that contract for us, which is lovely. So I'll um, I'll keep going till we're a little bit closer because we know if when we detach from our extra stage, it will give us a little bit of a, of a boost, right? Because those decouplers detach with a certain amount of force, and that could change our periapsis. If we wait until we're closer, then the change won't be really noticeable. If we do it from far away, it can have a pretty dramatic effect. But I'm good with this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop this stage off. Lovely. Our periapsis has basically not changed. So I'm going to go and I'm just going to time warp for now. There it is. Again, as soon as we hit the atmosphere, it'll auto de-time warp us. There's the atmosphere. I'm going to make sure we're facing retrograde here. Our capsule maybe will be stable and automatically hold itself retrograde. Um, it's still got the same aerodynamic shape over here. The problem is the center of mass is a little bit wonkier. Whoa, uh, camera, are you very confused? Yes, you are. Um, as such, it might not quite hold itself to the right angle. So I'm going to manually go and try to keep this facing retrograde. Um, a heat marker on the heat shield is fine. If any of the other parts start to get hot, you might have to like shift around a bit or you just rotate the pod to avoid having that bit be exposed to the heat. So just babysit that, but there we go. We're holding retrograde. In fact, well, we technically want to hold surface retrograde because this actually represents the motion of the air, but at that point, they were pretty darn similar. There's a uh, little bits of our debris falling down and burning up on a re-entry. Oh, we've got something that's overheating. There we go. So I'm just rotating. I'm using Q and E to rotate my craft in case any bit was dangling a little bit too much into the hot air. By rotating your craft, you can usually get it out of the, the danger zone. What? Oh, let's see again. What some people will do, and this actually does work, is you can just, like, spin like this. It'll guarantee that no single part of your ship is spending too much time in the hot zone. You're basically turning your ship into, like, one of those chicken rotisserie things. But it works, right? Every part will be exposed to the hot air a little bit, but never for too long to be a problem. So you can come in spinning like that. Because of our solar power, we've got like plenty of electrical charge. We happen to be landing on the sunny side of Kerbin. Even if we didn't, we have plenty of batteries, so that would have been okay. So we've got lots of ability to maneuver. I'm just going to shift to keep the retrograde marker in there. We are, we are slowing down pretty dramatically here. These flames are going to stop soon enough. There we go. Slowing, slowing, slowing. And this will be the end of our mission to land on another celestial body. Using everything that we have learned here, you can go to the moon. The moon will require more fuel because it's got higher gravity. So you will need more fuel to take off from the moon, but you'll also need more fuel to land on the moon because you're going to have to be f canceling more of the gravity on your way down. It turns out we had spare fuel on this design. It's possible you could take this exact same design and go to the moon, or maybe you'll have to get a little bit more fuel. Um, you don't have to add more fuel to the final stages. You might just have to add more fuel to the initial stages to help you get there with a little bit more left in the tank. Uh, we're going to go ahead and deploy the parachute. That's going to be fine. Um, we are going to continue the tutorial series. The next tutorial is going to deal with rendezvous and docking. This is the last very difficult, challenging thing to do and learn in Kerbal. We will be following up with that. Uh, the act I'm not going to do a, a video for the moon landing because it'd basically be the same as the Minmus landing. Just, you know, a little bit more fuel and a lot more of a rocky terrain. There you go. Perfect. Speed looking good. Yep, very happy with that. Lovely. Um, so there's no reason to do another one of those. Landing on other planets like Duna, which is a very convenient target, is also very, very, very similar to landing on the moon. The difference is the first thing you have to do if you're going to Duna, if you're going to another planet, is first you have to escape Kerbin. 
escape Kerbin sphere influence, and enter into orbit around the sun. But once you're in orbit around the sun, you can basically consider all the planets as a moon of the sun. Pretend that the sun is Kerbin and that Duna, which is Mars, pretend that Duna is just the moon. So at that point, you can just change your orbit to intersect Duna at some point. There are some sweet spots, there's some better ways to do it, um, but it's basically the exact same thing all along the way. It's these, these Hohmann transfers to, to higher orbits. That's all there is, higher or lower orbit. Landing on Duna, it's got an atmosphere, but it's really thin, so it's basically, you can almost mostly treat it the same as getting to the moon, but you can actually use parachutes to help you slow you yourself down. It's usually not enough to just use parachutes, but it's pretty darn close. So yeah, all those things are relative, are basically stuff you've already done, just more so, and you'll need more technology probably to get a little bit further. Um, but docking and rendezvous is something that we will definitely look at because um, that can be a little tricksy. So we've splashed down. We're going to go ahead and recover our vessel and get a crazy amount of science. Are you ready for this? We must have over a thousand. Or maybe not. Yeah, we have. Okay, we, have, you know, we came home. We earned over 1,500 science in this mission, leaving us at 1,600, which is amazing. We've also completed a few contracts here. Uh, space data around Kerbin, explore the moon, explore the moon, explore the moon. Oh, those were for old ones. Did I not actually do the thing where we return science? Also, ah, I forgot I was supposed to plant another flag on Minmus. <laughs> no, I accepted this contract. I was supposed to plant another flag. We've got 145,000. It's okay. You want to go back to Minmus multiple times because Minmus is loaded with a ton of different biomes. You could easily do, repeat the same mission we just did, just make sure to land on a, the lesser flats or the highlands or go for landing on one of the poles. Do do at least at least one more mission to Minmus, probably two to get a crap ton more science, and then you can remember to put, plant a flag there. The other thing to note is that um, Bob is now level two. You get a lot of experience from landing on another planet. Keep in mind that if you're not bringing a scientist, they can't reset the goo canister or the, um, the material bay. But since at this point, you've already got your science from the space around uh, Minmus, you only really need one use of your goo and your material bay for wherever you land on Minmus. Therefore, what you might want to do is do a mission with, say, Valentina. She'll have two stars by the end of that, um, and then she'll get a lot more interesting SAS controls, which is pretty cool. Uh, something like that. So get all get a bunch of your Kerbins up to level two. It'll be handy for later. Next episode, docking. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.